Early this week, I ordered a 3D printer, a Rostock Max version 2 from Matter Hackers, and the box came in today. This will be my first build of a machine like this, and I've been sort of preparing for the build. I'm going to be building this in my dining room, which was set up for last week's open house here. So we've got the table moved to the side, and that's, uh, that's actually a good thing. So I haven't opened the box yet, but we have the box from, uh, from Matter Hackers. I've got a box of ABS material that'll be used to print a fan shroud. Um, I've got some 3M sound deadening material. This will be the main build area, and I'll go into each one of the things in detail. So let's just do a quick sweep around the room here. And I've got a self-healing mat. I've got some magnetic part trays. I've got some parts bins. I've got a lamp. And I've got a stand here that has a Nikon P7700, which I'll be do using to uh, video record uh, details of the build. I've got some parts trays over here. I got an area here that's set up not so much for soldering but just keep all the soldering equipment together there's a hacko soldering station there's a fluke uh, 87 uh, v uh, meter i've got uh, little helping hands and pliers and wire strippers and things like that uh, over here is where i've laid out most of the tools that i expect to be able to use we have pliers wrenches, some very good screwdrivers, both uh, manual and powered, uh, hex wrenches, tweezers, calipers, uh, a level indicator, a whole bunch of exacto um, knives and cutting knives, um, another parts tray with extra blades in it. We're going to paint the edges of the melamine and uh, I will prime it with shellac. And then I hope to use this forged hammered paint. I've used it successfully on my motorcycle on certain parts and it works out very nicely. I think that'll give a nice look to contrast with the black. Um, as far as recording this thing, as I mentioned, I've got the, uh, the little Nikon here. I've got a couple of lights set up that normally I leave upstairs by my other 3D printer, a, a New Matter Mod T. So I've got a light up there and a light over here. And then I have here a Sony FDR V1000 or X1000, which is a uh, an action camera. I've got it at the end of a gooseneck attached to a microphone stand and that will let me get the camera easily above the workspace and I'm going to use that just to do time lapse and I can because it's on a microphone stand it makes it very easy to move around as I need it to get different perspectives and I might use this little camera here this is called a lens camera uh, from Sony um, and uh, like the uh, little Sony action camera this thing here um, is doesn't have a display and I can actually see it through a computer or through a little wrist mounted uh, monitor. So this is where I expect to be spending some quality time over the next uh, several days. And I thought that this might be entertaining for anyone who is considering a similar build. And um, we'll see how it works out. Okay, might as well start the unboxing. There have been a lot of unboxing videos, so I'll probably edit this down, make it a little uh, easier. We have some packing materials. So what I've got here <clears throat> is the basic uh, Rostock Max V2 3D printer. I've got an E3D 
V6 hot end kit, a set of uh, motor vibration dampers, and a, uh, a mount for the uh, an amount for the E3D hot end. This is the box with most of the parts in it, including the glass plate. I'll take this and put it on the table. This, I suspect, are the extra parts that I ordered. We have the E3D hot end. the motor mounts and the little hot end mounting part and little screws that are dropping out. Alright, little wing nuts that are dropping out of the package. So they go on the, the mat. And now we'll see if I lost any other little little parts. And this box here is the power supply. In this box is the LCD cover, the, the trim plates, a little decal for Rostock Max V2. And some nicely wrapped rails. We have the rails here, which I'll just leave up on the counter. Looks like I found the screw from the, the E3D. And then we have all of the laser cut parts. Which are very nicely packaged. We have some of the support structures. Oh, we get the whiff of burnt melamine. Let's see what we have in the box. First piece is the build platform glass. You can hear our parrot making guttural noises in the background. Maybe she'll speak up. This is the Onyx heated bed subassembly. This looks like the packing list. This is the Rambo board, the electronics, the brains of the, of the outfit. This is the stock hot end. Let's put that in here next to the E3D hot end. We have assorted wiring harnesses and, uh, and sheathing or sleeving. That's going to go in here. We have the arms and the ball joints, and all of that. that I'll put that in here. You give us a little spatula. This is going to go on the tool table. This is used to remove prints. We have a bag with uh, fans and power adapters and things like that. 
I'm adding to that a, um, an external USB connector and we'll see how that works out. So let's put that over there. These are the gears for the uh, for the verticals for the T tracks. This is the LCD display. These are the cheapskate carriages. This is part of the Easy Extruder, Easy Extruder. I'll stick that in with the hot end stuff. We have a couple of fans for the uh, for the extruder and for the layers. Uh, fans, I'll stick in with that stuff. An on-off switch. Let's put that in with the electrical. These are the the belts that drive that are driven from the motors. Uh, let's put that in with uh, put in with a bunch of cable ties. A whole bunch of hardware. And then these finally are the uh, stepper motors. And all the wiring for the stepper motors. One stepper motor for each axis and one stepper motor for the uh, the cold end, the easy extruder. And all you have to do is throw it all together and you get a printer. Well, sort of. <laughs>